Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of In Corto d'Arte. My name is Rita and today we're going to explore how artists inspire other artists. But first, our introductory video. this video there are a lot of images for contemporary inspirations but what do we mean with the title contemporary inspirations oh. Picasso the cubist painter apparently once said that good artists copy but great artists steal what what did he really want to say hmm. artists have always stolen techniques styles and stories by artists from the past. Renaissance artists, for example, looked at the Greek and Roman art, while 19th century artists were inspired by Renaissance artists. Even if some artists might deny the influence of the earlier art, if they chose to, contemporary, contemporary artists can look at previous artworks for inspiration. In this way, the artist can create a completely new type of art, but yet, somehow, it still remains familiar. Artists also have a lot of other reasons to choose to copy or interpret art from the past in their own style. Let's have a look at some of them. Andy Warhol is very well known for his artwork that look at the pop culture and the reality that he had around him, such as famous people, brands, products or icons. But did you know that he looked at and reproduced art from the past? Look at this artwork for example. Do you recognize this image? This is the famous Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. Well, this is a copy. Warhol actually reproduced these paintings about 60 times for a commission that he had in 1986. What is interesting about this particular painting is that Andy Warhol did not copy the original painting by Leonardo da Vinci, but he actually created a copy of a reproduction that he has his own family kitchen. So he did a copy of another copy. Andy Warhol also created other copies from paintings of the past. For example, this is a reproduction of the disquieting muses by the Italian artist Giorgio De Chirico. Quirrell worked on a huge project in which he created 23 paintings and 11 drawings of this and other paintings by Giorgio De Chirico. The reason behind this project was that Quirrell was struck by the mobility and repetition in De Chirico's paintings as if they were printed in series. So he wanted to try and reach the same effect, but actually using printmaking this time. Another American artist, Bill Viola, also included re references from past art in, in his videos. This One of the most famous is probably the greeting. And in an interview, Viola actually explained how we arrived and recreate this painting by the Italian artist Pontormo. He said that he happened to see the visitation by Pontormo in an exhibition and he was absolutely fascinated by the way that Pontormo recreated the movement in the textile of the painting. 
One day, while he was waiting at a traffic light, he saw in the corner of the street two ladies greeting each other, and the strong and the strong wind that day blew the women's dresses, reminding him of the painting by Pontormo. And this is the reason why he decided to reproduce this painting in video, because art can be found everywhere, even if from century ago. Viola was also inspired by other painters of the past, of the Renaissance, but in a different way this time. For example, in the Quintet of Astonished, he looked at Christ Mocked by Bosch, another Renaissance painter. This time, though, he does not recreate the painting with the same colours and the same characters, but he uses the painting as a way to explore human emotions. So what you can see in the video is five actors changing their expressions in slow motion, reminding of the stillness of a painting. The artist Kahinde Wiley creates beautiful and colourful portraits of young black people from the streets of Harlem or from his neighbourhood. What is fascinating about this subject is that they are dressed with modern street clothes, but they are placed in scenes typical of those painted by the old masters of the past. So, using earlier art techniques, such as the huge canvases and the golden frames, Wiley wants to portray black people with the same power and importance that white people had in art and history. For example, in his Napoleon leading the army over the Alps, we see a young black man in the same, in the same pose as Napoleon Bonaparte in the original painting by the, the French neoclassical paint artist Jacques-Louis David. Wiley also signed, and dated, also signed and dated the painting in the same place as David did on the horse breastplate. The exaggerated pose and the camouflage clothing are a way to underline the artificiality of Western art. Another painting in this style is Judith behaving colophons. Wiley's work refers to a series of paintings from the past, such as those of Caravaggio and Artemisia Gentileschi. In this painting, the subject is a black woman who looks at us fiercely, in contrast to the usual white male gaze so familiar in the history of art. But it's not only artists that are inspired by other artists. Movies too get inspiration from the art of the past. For example, the Disney's animation movie Rapunzel takes inspiration by this painting by the French artist Fragonard when Rapunzel comes down from the tower. Or in 2017, Loving Vincent, a movie about the life of Vincent van Gogh, was made by using his own art technique to recreate the scenes. How magic is that? It's beautiful. Now it's your turn to get inspired by the artist of the past. Choose your favourite painter or a painting that reminds you of something happened in the past or of a person that you know. We will create together our inspired artwork. So you will need some white or coloured paper, the image of the painting that you chose, some markers, pencils, uh, watercolours, you can really choose your favourite here, some scrap paper and scissors and a glue stick. As artists usually take a long time before getting to the final works, we will work in two stages. First, we will need to do a copy of the painting that we've chosen. This will help us to understand the technique that the artist used and how we can use it or change it to make it our own. I've decided to use this picture of self-portrait by the Mexican artist Frida Kahlo. For the background, I decided to use some scrap paper. And now I've chosen one of my personal pictures to recreate my self-portrait. I will insert some of my favorite things.
substitute the plants, the Frida Kahlo as in her background, I decided to add some sunflowers, which, my, which are my favourite flowers. I decided to use markers to, col to colour and define my drawing. But I also decided to use some color pencils to add some details and to create the background. To substitute Frida's monkey, I decided to use this little toy from my childhood. So this is my final this is my final inspired artwork. As you can see, is a is my self-portrait with some of my favorite things. We have some sunflowers on the background to remind the leaves that Frida has in her background. And then instead of a, instead of a little monkey, I've had my favorite toy. I'm really curious to know what yours will look like. And what about Claudio? Shall we have a look at what he created this time? So Claudio has decided to use the still life by the Cubist painter Brock. He really liked how the painting was made out of cubes and geometrical shapes. So he got inspired by Brock's painting and created a very colourful drawing of an Italian coffee machine. He used pencils to recreate the drawing. So how did you like doing your artwork inspired by another artist? Did it, make, did it make you feel more creative? Don't, don't forget that you can share your artwork with us via social media or via email. All the details are in the description box down below. Oh, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And to subscribe to this channel if you don't want to lose next videos. Now it's time to go, but we will see each other again in the next episode of Incorta d'Arte. Bye!